Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Here we have a three by three system, meaning we have a system of three linear differential equations and three unknowns. What does this look like? Well, x prime of t is this matrix times x of t. That means we want x1 of t has to be one times x1, I'm sorry, we want x1 prime to be one times x1 plus one times x2 plus one times x3. So we need that to be true. We need x2 prime of t to be x1 of t plus x2 of t minus x3 of t. And we need x3 prime of t to be x1 of t minus x2 of t plus x3 of t. So this is our system of three linear equations and three unknowns, and that's equivalent to this matrix system. Well, we want to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for this matrix. We compute the characteristic polynomial, which is the determinant of this three by three matrix. And I've done that real quickly. If you just expand, expand on the first row, you get this whole thing, which is a big mess, but it easily simplifies to a, a cubic polynomial, which you can factor nicely as minus lambda plus one times lambda minus two squared. In other words, lambda equals minus one is a root of multiplicity one, and lambda equals two is a root of multiplicity two. What does that tell us? That tells us we'll have one eigenvector up to non-zero scalar multiples corresponding to lambda equals minus one. And for lambda equals two, without doing the work ahead of time, we, we know we might have a one-dimensional eigenspace, which means just a single independent eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals two, or there might be two independent eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals two. But those are the only possibilities. There always has to be at least one eigenvector when you have an eigenvalue. That's what makes it an eigenvalue. But when you have a root of higher multiplicity in the characteristic polyno polynomial, you might have several independent eigenvectors. So let's take a look. Let's find the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals two. That means we solve the equation a minus two i times x is the zero vector. So we write down this augmented matrix. This is a minus two i. I've just subtracted two down the diagonal from the original matrix a. We do Gaussian row reduction and you see immediately that the second and third rows disappear. And I multiply the first by minus one. And now if we think of well, I've been using the notation where we're calling this v for the eigenvector. And we think of here v is the vector v1, v2, v3. Then we think of uh, here, this is v1, v2, and v3. v1 is equal to v2 plus v3, so that our eigenvector v can take the form v2 plus v3, v2, and v3. That's putting in this v1 is v2 plus v3 up in here. And I can split this into v2 times, here's a v2 and there's a v2, so I have 1, 1, 0, plus v3 times 1, 0, 1. So that tells us that 1, 1, 0 and 1, 0, 1 are eigenvectors for eigenvalue 2 in this case. And then for eigenvalue negative 1, I claim we have this eigenvector. I'll leave the computation of that to you guys. So here was our matrix A. How do we solve this? Well, we have our <coughs> solutions from the eigenvalue 2. We had the book actually uses this notation, x1, one solution, and this is a vector solution, would be e to the 2t times our first eigenvector with eigenvalue 2, 1, 1, 0. We have a vector solution x2 of t, which is e to the 2t times our second independent eigenvector with eigenvalue 2. And we have x3 of t, 
which is e to the minus t for eigenvalue negative 1 times the eigenvector, which was minus 1, 1, 1. And so what's our general solution? Our general solution is that x of t is a constant c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 plus c3 times x3. And we can write that as c1 e to the 2t times 1, 1, 0 plus c2 e to the 2t times 1, 0, 1 plus c3 times e to the minus t times minus 1, 1, 1. And then what's in the first component here will be our function x1 of t, which will be c1 e to the 2t plus c2 e to the 2t times 1 plus c3 e to the minus t times negative 1, which should be here. This should be a, a negative 1, so we should have a minus there. Important to check your work very carefully here x2 of t, the second component gives us a c1 e to the 2t times 1 plus c2 e to the 2t times 0, so I've left that one out, plus c3 e to the minus t times 1, so you have this plus that. And finally, x1 of t, that should be x3 of t, I don't say finally x1 of t, x3 of t, that third component, will have 0 times this first piece plus 1 times that second piece, c2 e to the 2t, plus 1 times the third piece, like that. And let's see if this actually works. Let's check. What do we have to check? Well, remember, this system of equations looks like x1 prime is x1 plus x2 plus x3. x2 prime should be x1 plus x2 minus x3. And x3 prime should be x1 minus x2 plus x3. Does that actually work here? Well, what is x1 prime? If I take this and differentiate it, I get 2c1 e to the 2t plus 2c2 e to the 2t plus now, because I bring down a minus 1 times that minus, c3 e to the minus t. Is this really x1 plus x2 plus x3? If you add up, they're nicely arranged in columns, you'll get 2c1 e to the 2t, you'll get 2c2 e to the 2t, and when you add these, you'll get a single c3 e to the minus t. So that this actually is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3. I'll put a check here. And we should check these other two, x2 prime, when I differentiate x2 here, I'll get 2c1 e to the 2t plus, or sorry, minus now, minus c3 e to the minus t. And is this really x1 plus x2 minus x3? This plus this minus this is 2c1 e to the 2t. That's good. This plus this minus this gives me 0. This plus this minus this gives me minus c3 e to the minus t. And that's a check. That's equal to x1 plus x2 minus x3, and I'll leave you guys to check x3 prime equals, it'll equal x1 minus x2 plus x3. When you compute that, you'll give yourself a check on that one as well.